I think we are live, my friend. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, happy Tuesday. We got a special treat tonight. Uh, we are one, we are streaming the entire Red Rocks performance um, from Opeth, Garden of the Titans. And I have my friend, um, Mike from Become the Night here. And when I, and when I dropped that last uh, Opeth video, um, we were on Instagram or something. You were like, man, yeah. that's, that's my jam. That's my band. And I had been sleeping on Opeth for quite some time. So um, tell me about Opeth. Tell me, tell me what I need to know. Whew. Okay, so I guess the first place to start is they, they hit this really interesting intersection between death metal and progressive metal and then sprinkles of black metal and uh, I guess folk and jazz, like little sprinkles of that stuff in there. But the biggest thing I would say is they come in three phases as of right now. Yeah. So the first phase, you got this really harsh, gross sounding death metal, Swedish as all, as all get out. Yeah. And then you have the middle phase about where producer Steven Wilson comes in and they start cleaning it up a little more, start venturing further into the proggy phase, introducing a little bit stronger elements of jazz and folk. And now, after their Watershed album, after they, they left with uh, Jens Bogren as producer, they're in their like traditional Northern European 70s prog rock phase. Yeah. So there's a, there's a <laughs> lot of different eras of Opeth, and it's... it's um, I, I am intrigued by all of them. I don't love all of them. <laughs> but Fair enough, them. but you can respect them all. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Okay, except um, for Orchid, that first album I really don't like. Have you seen this concert, this mm -mm. performance? No. Love it. Well, this one comes courtesy of one of our fearless moderators, Mr. Tonic. Thank you, Tonic. Let's say hi to some people. Jim and Jesse, good to see you out there. Mike C, good to see you. Vance, speaker 3600 Buckethead, I don't know. Uh, Blummel, <laughs> Bloom is divorce lawyer. Um, what is that show he's referencing? In words, Michael uh, Bloom. I don't know. Oh, Arrested Development. If you don't know that oh, show, it's hilarious. Yes. Love that show. Yeah. Weston, Cashew, uh, Terrifying Turtle, Bluebird. Good to see you guys. All right, so crack your beverage if you have one. We're going to get heavy. I'll start and stop like in between a song or two, and we'll chat about it. But uh, if you're new to Opeth, uh, like I am on the newer side to Opeth, it's going to be weird and wild and it's going to be heavy and I think we're going to have a great time. So uh, here's make, a question real quick. Hit me. Uh, I'm, I'm used to stopping very often. Should I, should I leave my comments to myself for a while? No, 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 no. We oh, want okay. all your comments. Okay. okay, okay. So, so like if, if, if I'm not paying attention, wave your hand or hit me in the private chat or something. Um, <laughs> because because I, have to, I have to stop it. Um, Man, and the, again, that word chat at the end of that sentence really changed the context a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, if you're not familiar with his channel, he's got a really cool channel. You got some really aggressive takes that I think are absolutely hilarious, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I, really, I really like it. Um, and so his link to his channel is the first link in the description. So if you would, check out his channel if you're unfamiliar, and shall we begin? Ready when you are. All right. Let's hit the button here, and here we go. All right. Put the cans on. Heck yeah. Okay, yeah. either from Pale Communion or um, Her Heritage Memory and Wedge. Okay.
Sorceress. Dang it, I was wrong. It's from Sorceress. Chris Huber corrected me. <laughs> Those Paradise changes, Jack. man. You hear that pick attack? Oh, yeah. It's just disgusting, gross, blown out toad. Yes, this is what I wanted tonight. I, I have thoroughly disliked this album, but this riff is so mean. how well they got it to translate from studio to live, frankly. Okay. So what do you think's going on with that signal change for that, uh, for that guitar rig? Because I have no idea. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll talk about that for a second, but do you okay. know if do you know yeah. if this is true? What Chris Huber uh, says. So they they're like, doing this. Oh, drop, sorry. Go ahead. Drop B, but the rest of the guitar in standard tuning. I've never messed with anything like that. I am not familiar with that at all, at all. Well, I don't know what the I don't know what the signal chain is, um, but the 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 pick attack, um, just the, like the scrapiness. Is yes. just it's so audible. It's so transparent and clear. Um, I have no idea. I mean, obviously they're playing a PRS. They're doing you know, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know anything about their signal chain after that. Do you? Uh, well, I knew more about it in the earlier eras. This new era, I'm not as sure about. Like they used to run, you know, the 808 um, driving hard signal out of that thing with low with low distortion into a relatively low distortion uh marshall and just recorded it like a ton of times super accurately yeah that's how they used to do it um <clears throat> with this this is obviously a very different tone this is like some almost like um old tube compression like like power amp compression breakup or like an actual compressor breakup like like yeah it's it's a little it, it's a little extreme in a really fun way it is and really it's, filthy <laughs> oh yeah, super filthy. And and like you're not Huge. gonna be able to use that tone playing like Dream Theater licks. You need to do the vroom, 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 you know? <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 meant for just moving a giant wall of sound, just chugging. Yes. Yeah. It's a big big old transient. Yeah, okay, so now so so gold is saying that uh or Sean and Gold are saying both the fifth and sixth strings are tuned down to A. Wow, okay. Who knows? Wow, that's that's that massive if true. Yeah, I mean it sounds huge. All right, let's keep going. Heck yeah. Oh, well, see, Tonic's got it. Crazy. I can't even imagine that tuning. I, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, their live mixes are excellent. It's unbelievable. I got to see them at the Rhyme and Dude, which is amazing. I bet. Six 
spring days. I, I refer to Martin Mendez as the uh, the Paul McCartney of death metal. <laughs> love, love this music. Kind of something that's very um what's the word? It's kind of the theme for this era. He's doing okay. these weird exotic scales with bizarre melodies that somehow become hooky. Okay. Uh, John, yes, and yes. <laughs> By the way, if the two low strings are tuned down to A, I mean, how light do you have to pick that six string so it's not just like oh, you swinky just, uh, everywhere? You, you just you just got suspended. Oh, did uh, it go on, down? Yeah, stream suspended for pilot policy violations. I think it's because of the. I bet it's because of the video. Probably not the audio. Well, let's find out for a second. This happens okay, so, yeah, all the time, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm. I know the game. <laughs> 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 I know how this goes. <laughs> um. Uh, hold on. Stand by. Yeah, no, no worries, man. So, 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 so what? So what generally happens is is I I choose to do longer features of bands that have not blocked in the past. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I don't even think when I did that last Opeth video that it even had a content ID claim. Nonetheless, blocking. Um, so, I think I think it, it it's not just um, it, it's not just the the band per se. It's oh no, I know. Is, yeah, okay, you, okay, you know. Oh, oh, yeah, dude. No, I, I mean, I have been through absolutely every inch of the entire process. Um, I, I always have a strike or two and and stuff pending I mean, oh really it, it constant, okay for for years um do, do you do you leave um do you leave these vods up of the streams or do you, you you nuke them i don't nuke them so like wow bold okay it, um well i mean it, it <laughs> It's still fair use. Um, Full, no, fully agree. I, I, I'm with you completely. What I do on my stream, I, I take every freaking possible way to guarantee it is really fair use. But I'm just afraid of what's going to happen to my channel if I just leave it up there. I know for sure. I by the remember... way, we're back on now, so people. Can yeah, yeah, yeah. Saw, but that's fine. <laughs> we can talk about we can talk about this because people want to know. Okay, well, I guess like not not to get too far on a tangent, but um. I remember I it was taking forever for me to get my silver play button, and I had no idea why. And I reached out to the community post. I reached out. I still to, don't have mine. This I guarantee you, this is why. Tell me, I, tell I, me about this. So, so like I do like my song suggestion Friday every Friday and Saturday. People super chat me what what they want me to give my opinion on, and I do it live. And I used to leave those up, and. Um, I wasn't getting my silver play button, and the only feedback I could get from anywhere was, 
your your channel doesn't in its entirety or or more than we like is violating our community guidelines or whatever. And I was just like, what the fucking a could this possibly be? Because there's a lot of channels that say a lot worse stuff than I do that are getting monetized. I'm totally. like, I bet you it's the fact that one live stream has 50 freaking copyright claims on each one. So then I deleted all of those, resubmitted for my play button, and got it. And I was like, wow. Okay. Okay. You have to submit for your play button? You used to. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is anymore. I, I've actually never even looked at it. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there's that. There's that. <laughs> so I just I just assumed that I, I don't know. I I, I I don't know. Um, but I do have an active uh, uh, community guideline strike that, that you can't remove. Just because you have a strike, that doesn't mean you can't get a play button. At least I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. I, I never made that correlation, but I'm going to leave. I'm, when this is over, I'm going to Google, how do I get my play button? I, I've forgotten about <laughs> it. I've totally forgotten about it. To, to be fair, it's more of a flex than anything else. Like mm -hmm. that, that whether or not I got my play button, like it's hung no, it's still in the box. It came, in. <laughs> you know. Like yeah. I, I have, I don't like, I don't need to show anyone. Right. For me, it was like, am I really a part of the YouTube community, or am I just yet another normie who happens to have a large following in YouTube's eyes? You know what I mean? Right. It, like. Like, oh, this is just a loud person. I guess we'll allow them to have a following so it doesn't look like we're biased, you know? But yeah. That, that was my my thing with the play button. Well, fair enough. Well, should we give it another song? We know it's going to get taken down. What the fuck? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good, too, if you are. I mean, I, I can listen to Opeth all day. It doesn't, doesn't have to be live if, if it helps your stream. So live actually does help. It's it's the mm. it's the album stuff that's on the official channels that we always have trouble with. Really? Yeah. So, like, I'll tell you what. Let's see if we can find. And and usually, like, this would be fine because, like, if you, <laughs> because if you look at this, if you look at this channel, um, by the way, I mean, great song that you picked. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that just happened. <laughs> Somehow it jumped to 126, but this is not Opeth's channel, and it, and it's it's, it's got 2.2 thousand subscribers, there's 900 thousand views, and if you look down here, um, like there is a content ID claim, but yes. but this puppy's up, so but yeah. it it doesn't always work that way. Live stream is a different animal, so so let's see. You guys are getting a, a little behind-the-scenes look here uh, of what goes on. Mm. See, now, some of these people, they change the audio and stuff so it doesn't set it off. So, like, this one doesn't have a content ID claim. Mm, okay. Well, so, let's, let's see if you get claimed. <laughs> let's give it a shot. See what blocks the stream. Well, if it gets blocked twice, I won't go for a third time. Um, or, okay, yeah, that, that's the that is the smart move. It, yeah, we we've, we've been down this road a lot. Um, <laughs> but actually, well, you know what? I'm we, gonna we should we should link up afterwards so we can uh, switch switch some stories and information. I think that would be valuable for both of us. Totally. All right, but in the in the in the um, yeah, whatever to be safe. Let's let's at least pick one of these songs. Can you see this? Yes. Uh, so not so very, Ghost of Perdition. Give me, give me one second. Yeah, Ghost there of Perdition. Okay. I, you know, we can skip that because I've done that one. But pick one of these other ones to start with, and we'll see if we get lucky. Uh, I absolutely love "In My Time of Need." That's up there on, on one of my favorite albums uh, from Damnation. Um, Cusp of Attorney is pretty good. Air Apparent. Okay, so I like. Air Parents great. It's it's really really great with the album experience. I don't know how it is live, but that's a fabulous one. Those are probably the the two I would pick between is either In My Time of Need or Air Parent. All right, we'll do In My Time of Need. And if we're still up, if we're still alive, then we'll do Air Parent. How about that? Beautiful. All right. From the Damnation record, this is a song called In My Time of Need. 
think this might be the same tour I saw. This is, uh, oh no, it's not. Okay, it's not. It's and by the way, for everybody watching, this is Red Rocks. They're at Red Rocks. Yes. Which is so epic. It's a Stephen Wilson produced album. I can't see the meaning of this life I'm leading. I try to forget you. Very cool. This also uh, showcases Martin Mendez being his Paul McCartney self. <laughs> Still a beautiful song. It's just it's not as enveloping and intimate when you have the the amphitheater. Right, right, right. The rapture born with illness, lost thoughts of death inside death. Bass sounds so good. Oh, delicious. I, I, I wish I could get bass tone as good as him. I have chased that for a while. Totally. Uh, Fishing Idaho, yes, no the same Stephen Wilson of Morgan Wayne Green. He's an amazing mixing engineer and producer. Yeah. That, that massive. Oh, wait, 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 sorry. What'd you say? Uh, I was gonna say that that massive contrast between what you're used to with Opeth of that just real thick, holy crap, massiveness and, and aggressiveness. <clears throat> this is a whole album that sounded like this in in the yeah. middle of their whole catalog, um, and that was kind of I guess described as the the most uh, accessible they they were trying to be. Yeah, and, and it was still just mega depressing, <laughs> but, but absolutely beautiful stuff though. It's it's either my favorite or second favorite album. I haven't decided. All right, let's keep going. We're still up. <laughs> solo on record is actually a whole slide solo. Really? Wow, listen to everybody singing.
Not my favorite, but dang it! But but but, but a, a a gorgeous song. Like I love the arrangement. I love that. I just love the sound and the presentation of the band. Like it is so just well done and well presented. Like it, like the mix is incredible. All the the actual timbre of the instruments and the sounds like blend perfectly. I, the, I and, would. Definitely recommend the studio experience over the live one. I, I I saw it live myself, like this this song, and it felt different there in the room. Right. But like it, it's way more intimate, and I guess for lack of a better term, like the reverb is, is much more controlled in that experience. Um, it, it makes it makes a huge difference, it, and it's also one that like. You don't just toss on to be like, oh yeah, I'm like I'm gonna be driving to my dentist appointment. You know, it's like you you put on the cans, you close your eyes. You know, <laughs> this is one of those. Just like, yeah, chill. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's do. What was the other one you said here? Air apparent. Air apparent. That that should probably. I. I well, well, we'll see. Um, hold on. Let me grab another beer. Let's yes, see. everyone out there, grab another beer. Heck yes. Friends, I hope you're doing well out there. Happy Tuesday. See, I had one decent beer, and now I'm on to the trash light beer. Terrible. Terrible indeed. Okay. Let's do Air Apparent. Are we ready? It's a fat one, dude. It's a, it's a big boy. <laughs> okay, here we go. Bam. We're still alive. Oh, yeah. of the theme. B yeah. Big mf -er in tiny little, like, Dream of Worm tongue style. Yes. Oh, man. Yes. I, do you, okay, after this, you need to listen to this in hands. Okay. Like, on the studio version. Oh! What's up?
Dude. <laughs> so awesome. We'll re we'll pick it up in a second. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. It's always good to start and stop a little bit, um, dude. That I love. I just I I I it, can't. It, it sounds even better in the studio one, man. It's it's abusive and punishing in the best way. Dude, I'm gonna listen to it um, in my car like really loud the next time I'm in it. Yes. Um, <laughs> that is the yes. Way. Yes. Um, like that, that first time you heard like battery or, or like that ass end of one, that's, that's, you're going to get that again. See, I love it. I love that. Um, dude, yeah, just the, I just, I'm so blown away by how good everything sounds and how clear it sounds live. Like it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to think of a band that, uh, that sounds that clear. Uh, live, like with such heavy grooves, like it's really hard to think of one that just actually sounds better. Hmm. It, it's hard for me to say. I haven't seen like a lot of the big boys, like a Slipknot or Avenged Sevenfold live. I would imagine there's Avenged sound is... Sevenfold, maybe uh, less so with Slipknot, in my opinion. Okay, that's that's fair. Uh, and I mean, <clears throat> I'm sure Slipknot is battling a lot of things in arenas. You know what I mean, like as far as like totally. sound obstacles and stuff. Totally. But um, uh, yeah, that's one of the things that I loved about the um, that's one of the things I loved about the Opeth show that I went to was it it didn't take away from the studio experience that I had. Yeah, right. They on. They, they they really captured it well. Now, I mean, also keeping in mind. Sorry, sorry to ruin it for any of the uh, people in chat right now, but there there is a such thing as overdubbing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you, you never know what actually happened live. But. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely true. All right, let's keep it going. Yes. Yeah, J Jason Rodriguez is uh, calling out Tool as someone who sounds amazing. Okay, I gotta stop. I gotta stop the video because that's okay. absolutely oh, oh, oh. true. Um, oh, okay, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, capturing the live performance uh, this cleanly, because Tool is one of those bands where there is no official live footage. There's no. I didn't know that. Th no, they don't. So, so one, you're not allowed to bring your phones out at a tool show. You get kicked out. Um, so you can't record. Two, um, to the best of my knowledge, there is no like tool live DVD that you can buy or download. There's nothing on their page. Um, there's like very, very little live tool footage, and they and it's on purpose. They want you to go to the show. <clears throat> Um, and so I haven't seen like an actual produced live tool video. I would imagine that the quality would be very much like hearing them in the arena, which is tremendous. I just, I haven't heard it. I haven't seen it. Um, and so like, I'm sure some of these other bands, like I've seen them, they sound amazing live, but it's a totally different thing to capture it for a live performance and have it on a video here. Like, that's a very different thing. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, I... I, I, I don't know, man. I, I... What would make Tool not want to have live footage of them out? Dude, it's the, I, sa I, it's the same thing as why they don't do press or interviews. It's the it's the mystique. It's the... It's the it's, uh, it's except the, the, that the Maynard James Keenan went on Joe Rogan. How much more public can you be? <laughs> but, but that is um that is basically the only interview he does is because he and Joe are friends. Like that's that's essentially okay. it. Um and it's true of the rest of the band too, and it's been consistent over, you know, their thirty years or ever they've been together. They really don't do press, they don't do interviews, um, they don't allow people to record any part of their show. You can't I mean, literally, I went to a show here in D.C. in the fall, and we had floor seats, 
and I was with a group of four guys, and my one friend took his phone out because he got a text message, and they kicked him out. They, wow. They, the bouncer Just came. getting a text message. Wow. Dude, pulled his phone out, came right there, and ripped it and took it out. Um, all, all Maynard will allow is, you, is, is he will allow you to take your phone out for the very last song, and he'll let you record that. But all the way up until that, and it's always the same song, right? And so there's there's lots of like sh- of shitty footage of like one song, but anyway, Tool's a whole nother conversation. They're they're yeah just, yeah. It's have you seen them? No, I have not. I, I'm one Everyone of those guys. Everyone should. I, I I believe it. <clears throat> I'm I'm one of those guys where I never fully fell in love with them. Although I still definitely have a lot of respect for them. Just like the the ticket price, I don't know if it's worth it for me to 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 pay it yet. But we'll see. Yeah. Um, yes, Tonic. I know there's still seven minutes of air apparent left. We're gonna get you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, I would just say, if if for anybody out there, if you can ever get if you can ever uh, get the opportunity to go see Tool, regardless of what genre you're in or you're into, uh, you should because it's very very much an artistic expression and almost more like theater than it is a show and it's just cooler than shit and you're going to be really happy you went and saw Danny Carey live when you could that's the big thing like that's fair yeah it is fair and uh and Tool is one of those bands not that a lot of heavy bands don't do this but I you know I feel like it's getting harder and harder and harder to find shows where every single person is standing the whole show and they do the drums the right way where it just feels like you're getting hit in the chest with a cannon and you can't speak to the person next to you. Like I love that. You, You know, it's getting harder and harder to find back to Opeth. Hit the button. This is a part where I would say the natural verb of the room is doing a disservice to the uh, the swing here. Okay. Should have done this differently. <laughs> there you go, Corbin. I mean, Thanks for tuning in, bro. Yes, thank you. Oh, 
Oh yeah, this would be a good one to run to. Oh yeah. A actually, yeah. I would say even better than lifting, frankly. Yeah. This next part's gonna hit, but on album, the part that's about to come up, if, if I remember correctly, is like the the way I described it is like the last lion cry before it's before it's died, before the <laughs> alpha male has has been extinguished, because okay. this is the last album that they did that they, where they had this sound. Okay. That this after this, where they went to their whole like Northern European '70s prog rock phase. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Sorry. Oh! The monkeys, Jack. Yeah. Where they were double tracks. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Smooth. Like poignant. And it's kind of, oh, they did the there. Yeah. <laughs> Love that bass build. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And they have this, I guess you could call it vamping for, for lack of a better term. Thank you. Va vamping on this mood that I don't know, like, you, you ever you ever have a really terrible moment in your life? Like, a really, really, really bad one? Of course. I mean, I haven't experienced extreme tragedy, but yes. So, like, it, it's basically that moment where you feel allowed to sulk in it. Because mm -hmm. most time, at least, I, I can't speak for, for women, but at least as I can speak for most men. Like, you kind of put it off and just got to live life and keep moving, you know, and this is kind of the moment until we fall to pieces. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yes. But, um, this is kind of the moment where you get permission to just live in it for a while, you know, and, and like uh, musically speaking for, for lack of a better term and the way that they make it. So it's not just a, a brain numbing mind meld is all of those, different fills and, and little bits of improvisation that happen throughout it. it it's, it's one of my favorite Opeth moments. It also makes me like really nostalgic because that's, that's never coming back. You know, that, yeah. that sound is never coming back from Opeth. Interesting. So what, so what uh, year, give or take, is this, is this era from? Like, what, what are you talking, early 2000s? Uh, either mid or early 2000s. I want to say 2006 or 2008, something, something like, like that. that. Something like that. Yeah, Blum was, uh, uh, that is exactly, we all go to shows, for sure. Okay, shall we continue? 
Two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. All right. So this stream so far is staying up. So, you know, sometimes it's just it's you know it's the luck of the draw, and people people do all kinds of crazy things. Like sometimes they, you know, they they'll slow it down just like two clicks, and you don't you yes. and I don't really notice it, you know. But the bots the the bots don't get it. Um, or or something like that, or, or or there's so many different tricks. I don't do any of that stuff, but it's nice when you find one. So. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I I've, I've messed with it a little bit here and there on my on my reaction videos, but I don't know. I, I've just kind of given up at this point. <laughs> well, we can we should and could actually absolutely have that conversation. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, I. I I, I dispute everything at this point, mm. so it's a it's a it's it, I'm I'm in a constant state of flux. But, um, you know, I've disputed uh, well over I'd say four or five hundred videos at this point. Holy crap! Wow. Yeah. So I've, I'm so I've, I've give I've given up. They've beat they've beaten the the fire out of me, man. Um. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's it's. <clears throat> All I can say is that uh, uh, in the early days, or especially like, or in the middle days, I guess you will, you you know, when I had two strikes at a time and I was sweating bullets, thinking that my whole channel yeah, that, was going to go down. Um, that is sweating bullets for sure. Yeah, but when you go through that and then you get on the other side and you realize that uh, no one's <clears throat> taking a guitar teacher to court over hundreds or maybe even low thousands of dollars um you 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 learn to just click the button and uh and it's all right but but you gotta live it to to feel that relief and to and and to have the anxiety start to wane from you know disputing and appealing and then counter uh you know claiming everything and it's it, it's i mean i'm always having four or five videos that are in various states of being blocked and strike that I'm working to get fixed it constantly. It's a mess. Do we, we need, we need to have a Skype call later. <laughs> we okay. Do. I yeah. Love, I love, I'll, love to discuss this. I, I'll show you mine. You show me yours. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> oh, do, you, do, you, do you, do you mind if I step away real quick to use the, uh, the restroom? Yes. Everybody time out. Take a leak. Appreciate I'll you. do the same. Work. All right, friends, family, how you doing out there? It's intermission. Oh, could you hear me flush? Love it. No, no hold music. You don't get hold music. Well, this has been fun. It looks like we're going to be safe to play the rest of the show. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um... But uh, I'm feeling cautiously optimistic here. 
Put the cans back on. You back, what we, sir? Uh, what, are we, what are we throwing on? I'm going to just go f- let it play for the rest of the show and see if we get lucky. Word. Okay, yeah. All right. If you're just tuning in, Opet, Become the Night. His link's in the channel. We're watching Garden of the Titans live from Red Rocks in 2017. Let's go. Thank you. I was planning to take my jacket off after the first yeah, song. Tonic, if all goes as planned, we will. Fucking freezing. <laughs> uh, songs we skipped, yeah. Jam and Jesse, that's beautiful. I love that. I'm grateful to be here. Hell yeah. Dude, exactly. All about exactly. it. Gonna play a song next that, that we haven't played much. We started playing the next music festival tour, like concert that. I'm going to. I'm gonna answer this real quick because it's fun. Uh, Do it. I am. I don't know about concerts because I go to a lot of concerts. Uh, but the next festival I'm going to is I'm going to the the big rock one in uh, I forget what they call it in um, in Daytona at the at the racetrack. Oh. Oh. Okay. With with Pantera and Tool headlining. <laughs> and, That's gonna be a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And. Oh, damn. And yeah, well, Charlie Benante, the the drummer playing at Pantera, invited me to come down. And no way. Yes. Oh damn. Dude. And so and so I am. Um, I rented this really shitty motel right next to the racetrack in Daytona. Never. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And I think there's going to be like. I don't know. I think the place holds like two hundred fifty thousand people in the infield. Holy crap! Like it's wow. so, it's something nuts. Like the lineup. I forget what the I forget what the show is called. I'm just gonna, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna pull it up. Um, yeah, go for it. Here. <laughs> um. Let's see. Let's see. Are, Day- are like like do you, are you in a committed relationship and or have kids? I am married and I have four children. Okay, just, just, just be careful down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's called it's called Welcome to Rockville. Um, I don't know, whatever. But dude, okay, let me let me let me actually, you know what? I'll just pull it up on the stream here. Um, yeah, man, this is fun. I like this. Ah, oh, dude. All right, so look, Thursday, Slipknot, Rob Zombie, Queen of the Stone Age, Pussifer. Um, it's suicidal tendencies. I love them. Um, but then Friday, Avenge Sevenfold, Evanescence, Hardy. This day, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not really as, as psyched about this day. But then Pantera, Godsmack, and Alice Cooper, um, Knocked Loose, Alter Bridge, um, and then... Alter Bridge. They're, they're freaking great live, man. Yeah. And really then Sunday, good. Tool, Deftone, Incubus, Mars Volta, Coheed and Cambria. Coheed um, is awesome. They're very yes. good live. Yes. And and so much more. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. Can you, can you scroll back up super quick? What you want? What you want? Uh, Avatar. It's on the, the first day. Yeah, right below right here. Lucifer. That's legit. Uh, oh, no. The, wait. Does that say Avatar or Arion? Avatar. Oh, okay, it is Avatar. Okay, are you familiar with that band? No, that's one you might not want to miss. I, I've I've heard a a number of their stuff, and it's really well produced, really good songwriting, but uh, they're they're very theatrical live. That that's a band I would be interested to see live. Dude, so I, there's I, so many crazy. Ba- I don't know if they have different stages or what. But like this band here, Bandmade, is this all female oh, yeah. Japanese. Yeah. Like, like there's some crazy deep cuts in here. Um, they, bandmade shreds hard, dude. Yeah, got, I know, I know. You got that that single coil math rock thing going on, dude. The single. You know, I I dude, I love playing heavy music with single coils. I I, I mean. It's underrated. It's so it, underrated. It's so underrated. Now, everybody watching, I know we still have Opeth to watch, but um, it is so underrated. Like, even P90s get a bad rep. Like, like that Black Sabbath sound of Tony Aomi 
is a P90 through Laney. That is a P90, and it is so big and transparent. There, there, there's a lot of guys who still chase that sound, and they don't and they don't use P90s, which is like, well, I mean, they're gonna you know start start at the source, right? It's just. I remember I I, I was at. Uh, I was in Germany one time for a, a GitCon, and I met Phil X. And Phil X, you know, is a P90 super fr- a super fan, right? And and I was playing with him, and he was like, "Man, the P90 is the biggest sound you can get." You know, it's there's something about uh, running a P90 <clears throat> through a really powerful amp, and and he said the trick is using a really light touch and light string so light string i'm already out i'm already out i can't do that <laughs> I, I know i know i have to get all my guitars like frets dressed every like two to three years i destroy it it's bad for my hands I, I can't fix it i don't know what to do um but but he was just like that huge blooming sound that like like the trick to that you know filling up the whole arena with open air like Tony Omi does like where it just sounds massive, it's the P90s, it is big single notes or if you do power chord just two notes not like three you know, and not even so much fifth in the bass you know, uh, the inverted power chords, and just really light touch and really powerful amplifiers like that's it, the thing. It, it sounds it sounds to me based upon what you're saying don't don't put too much signal through essentially like and let the let, amp do all the work yeah yeah let well for that matter the, the pickups too because it sounds sure. like based upon what you're saying that the p90s are like very sensitive and, and like you start you start going over that or start and you said you said nines right for the string gauge yeah light lighter the better um okay okay and uh like i know billy gibbons was always a always a proponent of the same thing not that he always played p90s but um he would always try to find the lightest strings he could that he could play without the actual pressure of his hands changing the pitch of and the intonation of the notes and then just letting the amp and i guess the pickups or whatever make the notes just bloom like that like, like billy no, gibbons knowing is, his tone i would have never thought that that's crazy wow yeah and he actually credits bb king for um for turning him on to that wow. because he said he met bb king one time and uh, he said boy why are you working so hard you know <laughs> with those heavy strings he's like just sit back and let, let the amp do the work you know he's like we do this 300 times a year why are you working so hard but it, dude, it's a it's a thing, man. People swear by it. Um, yet yet another reason you need to visit Nashville because we got a museum here that holds Lucille, so you should, I, you should come see it. So I love Nashville, and, and guys, I promise we're gonna get back to OPEP. Um, but I love Nashville. Annie and I, my wife, his name's Annie, uh, had the best time when we came last summer, and I'm trying to find a way to come back down. Um, and, well, there's endless reasons, but but uh, love Nashville. Now, how far are you from you know the shit? Like in the middle of it. <laughs> I'm uh, give give or take about twenty eighteen minutes, give or so. All right. Do you ever do you ever go um, to like the underdog and like the places in East Nashville? Like the, I know Guthrie Traps got that whole hang no, they do every week I, and all that. I, I try to try to avoid East Nashville if I can. <laughs> Just because it's blowing up. Well, a, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll discuss that later. <laughs> it's it's okay. just like it's it's not it's not my scene. It's Hips, not my particular hipster scene. madness. Yeah, yeah, the little little Brooklyn. Dude, I know. I'm in Baltimore. We have a Bro- we have a Brooklyn oh, here. Oh damn! All it's, right, yeah, it's, it's, a, a, it's a thing. Um, but that's okay. That's all right. We we might play Baltimore this year. If we do, I'll let you know. Really. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we, okay. we're, we're talking about doing a little northeastern guy with a, a friend band of ours. Um, that is from Baltimore. No, they're they're from kind of like 
Jersey, New York ish area, but they they need to go to Boston, New York City, maybe Philly, maybe Baltimore. They're they're still figuring that out. Okay, well, definitely let me know, and if you do, come do a video, hang out, drink some beers or whatever. Hell yeah, hell yeah, dude. All right, back to Opeth. Here we go, my friends. And uh, when I wrote this song, I patted my, my, my own shoulder and said, congratulations, <laughs> Mike, you, you, you've written your first cock rock song. <laughs> Do you want to hear it? <laughs> never, never. <laughs> Here he goes. He, he's got that beautifully dry Northern European. Yeah, it sounds like he's working with the crowd. It's great. Oh, I love that. Clean sounds and those amps sound so great. Perfect amount of verb. So here's the question. Do you think that's modeled or do you think that's real? I think it's modeled. I think it's modeled too. <laughs> Not because it's, I can hear the difference, but just because of just for the practicality. <laughs> for sure.
love it. River Gagas is very good. Has some very delicious bends. So warm. like a sprint like the, the the guitar tones are just so warm there's not even a, a hint of ice pickiness anywhere near it oh yeah oh yeah and that, like it's that, that, that is post-processing for the record because if you man tell yeah, me about okay. this tell me tell me hit me. i made i made a video explaining why i ruined like my favorite opeth record for myself okay go on um there, there's this, uh, there's this plugin for specifically made for guitars called the called the uh, Corneff. It's by made by Dan Corneff, big producer. Corneff uh, amplified instrument processor, and it has like a bajillion different chains. It's all proprietary. It's like basically an all-in-one mixing plugin for your guitars in the studio. Mm -hmm. One of the things is called the insufferable mid-range filter. <laughs> Which gets rid of that ice pickiness, like the 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 uh, surgical dialing for EQ. That's what it that, sounds like. I mean, it is eliminated. Yeah, yeah. And so they learned that when they finally went with Jens Bogren, and I think they found out how to translate that live. Like I, I guarantee, they are like beating the crap out of their amps. It's a lot of classic gear, which is going to give you that ice pickiness. But then in post, yeah, Tonic says like, they use mostly Laneys, or at least it looks that way. Oh wow! Okay, word. You'd be surprised how much Tonic knows. We should bring him into the chat and let him. Let, he probably knows their whole signal chain and everything. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> <laughs> At I the end it. of the stream, maybe we will if he wants to. Friggin' a. Um, shall we continue? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Are you good on time? Um, at least for a little bit. I got. I got. I definitely. Yeah, I got a little bit. Yeah, for sure. All right. Just let me know if we get close for you. Thank you. Yeah, man, for sure. You know, it's a god on rock and roll party tonight. Thing is, you never seen John fucking Bo, uh, John Bon Jovi. You never seen <laughs> Freeze on stage. I guess I'm not him. <laughs> I love it. Just take a break. Just tuning. <laughs> not switching out the guitars. I love it. A rock show is not complete without it being said three times, and we're at two now. So go ahead. People. We want to thank you so much for staying and checking us out. Even though it's windy and it's cold and it's uh, <coughs> fucking beautiful. I, lo I love how Michael's just like, gonna I'm going to say the most like chill positive like barely positive thing about the the city and everyone's and this will also be the last song yeah the right <laughs> i love it yes. <clears throat> we have to go to uh where are we going tomorrow we're going to uh kansas city misery misery Did I say misery? <laughs> I like Ain't wrong. There. I think I've been there. I don't remember, to be honest. But yeah, I like he it. wrote several songs about it. Thank you very much for coming Did he? out. We fucking love him. Thank you so much. Mis misery, not Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, not 
sure if I... Like, I've definitely heard every Opeth song, but this one's not familiar to me. Deliverance. Oh, okay. The intro was different. Okay, yeah. I know this one. For the record, way better mixed live than on record. <laughs> okay. Greg approves. they get this level of saturation and then so cleanly stop without using a noise gate. I've been chasing that for so long. Holy Yes. God. How do they not have a noise gate? How do they keep the floor in all of us? I think it's the kind of saturation. I don't, I don't know what the technical of it. It's modeling. I'm, modeling. It's, okay, definitely a part of it is modeling.
Okay, the growls are a lot different. That's the best way I would describe it. Okay. He, he blew out his voice for a while, which I think is one of the reasons why they stopped writing growls in their newer stuff. Um, but I think that's also why his live growls are not quite the not quite the same. Yes. He's trying to preserve his voice. But Tonic has joined us. That worked. What up, Tonic? Getting to know the type. real quick so we yeah. can so we can say hi to tonic tonic how are you brother i'm doing good can you hear me yeah i've got yeah, you man. got you loud and clear man awesome, awesome. Um, dude this is right up right up my my alley man. i i i love seeing you oh yeah put them up over there you know as the drummer's going for it oh fuck Mark, martin axenrod is amazing everybody you know, wax poetically about uh, former drummers, but uh, Action Rod fucking kills. He he is a very good drummer. I I will say, uh, I forget the guy's the guy's last name is Mendez, but I forget his first name. 
the, Martin, the drummer before. Martin Mendez. <laughs> I thought thought Martin was the bassist. They've had many Martins. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay. It's a guy. It's a guy with a freaking Latin last name. <laughs> I know that for sure. Damn it, I feel terrible. But like, so, there there was some there's something about his touch that I really liked on those albums that I feel like is, <clears throat> it was kind of gone after he left. Yeah, well, also, I just, I, you know, the first time I saw him, it was with, uh, you know, you know, now I'm feeling horrible. I can't remember the the former uh, lead guitarist, you know, before. Uh, I, I don't Frederick. either, so that you're good. <laughs> yeah, I, you're good. The first time I saw them was with, with him and, you know, was blown away by them at that time. And that was 2005. And uh, it was a mo- there was a mosh pit, right? And by the last time I saw them, it was, you know, it was like guys on dates with their girlfriends seeing Opeth and totally different crowd, but still <laughs> equally <laughs> an incredible band, right? I mean, it's it, it depends on what, what you're into, but... Uh, so, so, so wait a minute, guys totally brought their girlfriend on dates to see Opeth? <laughs> yeah. Yes. You gotta let that one sink in here. I mean, it's, it's right before the suicide pact, you have to keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Lopez. It was Martin Lopez, not Martin Martin Lopez. Martin Lopez. Yeah, yeah. That was the name. Lopez okay. Was the drummer. Mendez was, yeah, it was the, it was the yeah. chat. Chat cleared that up. Thank you, chat. Yes, but still, so, Ming Martin. <laughs> so, Tonic, just out of curiosity, the two of us are drinking some trash light beer, but you look like you have something nice. What do you have there? Um. Well, I just finished one of these. It's a local it brewery. Is. Arbiter Brewing, your opacity. Local uh, to your your new home? Local to my new home in Minnesota. Yes, How's that going? Is, it's going awesome. We absolutely Good love it. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I just it's a homecoming for me. Yeah. It's a new yeah. home for my wife. And that's what yeah. I was worried about. That she wouldn't like it. And she absolutely adores it here. The people are so nice. She's gotten it's good with low, the snow shovel. Grass. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's got. She's become from the snow shovel. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right. Well, let's finish the rest of this, and then uh, you know we'll talk tone. We'll talk gear because I'm sure I'm sure you have. Some yeah, there's insight. lots of gear stuff going on here. The uh, the rig rundowns for these guys is. You know, I don't think I could cover it in three hours. I mean, we can glaze over it. <laughs> Jesus. All right. All right. Um, are you still good on time? Can we play play the end of this song, and then we'll talk gear, and then we'll call it a night? Yes. Yes. Let me, or um, maybe another song, too, please. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's up to it's up to him, our, our, our guest here. Let me, uh, uh, thank you. I, I appreciate the uh, the hospitality. Uh, let me Let me grab one more beer. And then Sold. let's let's do all those things. Sold. I can do that too. Awesome. I'm also so Tonic, having right now I've moved on to a a brew from Chicago called uh, Ninja versus Unicorn. <laughs> Ninja versus oh, yeah. Unicorn. Yeah. So uh, how uh, so how far out are you um, from actually downtown Minneapolis? Half hour half hour and now when you moved i mean you don't have to give too many details but when you moved did you pick your location based on you know where you had friends and family already or, or was there like a, a different consideration well it's uh you know uh mostly for family um my uh my stepfather is is not doing great he's doing better than he has been but uh um that was one of the big things was to move to be closer to family you know, but did you, what I'm mom. saying is, did you move like to their neighborhood, or did no. you, or did you have yeah. like a specific spot that you always wanted? To, like, if you ever were to go back, you would, you know, hit. Doesn't really work that way in real estate, as you know. <laughs> right? Well, especially when you move in a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even if you want to move to where you know your hometown, there just wasn't anything for sale in my hometown, and what. The one thing that did come up for sale is like, yeah, that's nice, but not really what we're looking for. So mm-hmm. we kept it pretty open. We wanted some land. We wanted some peace and quiet out in the, we're out in the sticks, really. But 
to Styx is 30 minutes from Minneapolis. Basically 30 well, that's kinda, minutes. That's kind of like me too. Me. I mean, I'm, I'm out in yeah. Styx, but I can be downtown in 40 minutes, give or take. Yeah. So, so do you have neighbors? So you're not in a neighborhood? Oh yeah, no. We're we there's uh there's neighbors, but each each uh, house has a couple of acres of land, and so you, you have know, to like, shoot your you have to shoot your potato gun to the neighbors. <laughs> not really. You walked in on I mean, an interesting part of the conversation. Not the door, but right so right now. I have, yeah. So right I now I'll be walking through a bunch of snow. Yeah. Yeah. Um. The only reason I say that is because I have, and I know everybody watching, we're going to get back to Opeth, I promise. I keep saying that. Um, but these conversations are so fun. Um, I have an eight-foot-long triple-chamber potato gun that, that, is, that, that, is, that is painted orange. And, and I fire the potatoes. Sometimes I soak them in kerosene. And I oh, fire boy. the potatoes straight up into the, the... flaming potatoes. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's make that. Let's make that a video. I'll come to Baltimore you know, I for sh- that. <laughs> I should make it a video. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, fiery starch bomb. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not in. A, I'm not in a neighborhood anymore. Um, but, um, I, uh, uh, my dad used to have a place on the Chesapeake Bay. And we used to, and, and I made this potato gun in high school, and it's still, it's still going strong. It still fires. And we used to, we used to, again, soak them in kerosene and then lay them on, lay the, lay the gun uh, on the dock and skip it all the oh, way man. across the bay on fire. Wow. That's Dude. actually impressive. <laughs> I That's mean... Awesome. I'm talking about it on a live stream 20 years later. I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we did something similar with the old uh, models, like model cars or airplanes. Yeah. Stick, uh, load them full of firecrackers and uh, stuff the, the wicks into the, the, the uh, rocket engine yeah. like for model rockets. So it lets off a charge to, to let off the, the uh, parachute. That lights the firecrackers on fire, and then the, the thing goes flying, and then it just explodes. Yeah. All yeah, right. They're falling apart anyway. I mean, as well blow it up. Right? Dude, I mean, what else are we doing? It's America. Shall we finish our Opeth set here, and then we'll talk about the gear? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Boom. Yes, Jim and Jesse. God bless the us. Yes. visual behind there on that projection screen yeah imagine that blown up to three times the size of a multi-tiered led screen behind them it okay. was fucking nuts dude that was the rhyme it was amazing and whatever sounds coming through your speakers now was coming completely through your body it was so good oh god such a great closer
Mike, I'll have to send you some video that I captured from when I saw them at the Ryman. Please Just do. So you, so, you, so you get some sense of scale. <laughs> Please do. There's nothing like the scenic show at Red Rock. I'd love to see him in Red Rock. I'd love to see anyone in Red Rock, frankly. Love it. Hell Love yeah. it. I know we didn't yep. get to do all the songs here. So Tonic, talk to us, man. I know you I know you have some of the some insight, some details about their yeah. guitar chain. Like where do we where to begin? Where do you want to begin? It's just so transparent. It's so huge. And it, and the thing that really sta- stands out to me, two things. <laughs> The absolute warmth and clarity for the lead tones. Um, yep. Again, there's no ice pickiness at all. It is just straight down the middle, and it's so round and warm. And two, I I hear and I feel every pick rig, every pick attack. Yeah. Like that's not lost in there, and it's it, it like it just it's just it, you you just hear it. Yeah, my understanding of uh, the way that these guys have got everything set up, and a lot of it comes from Frederick. He, he's done some rig rundowns. Currently, I mean, they've been using a lot of Synergy gear. So Synergy power amp, Synergy preamps. Uh, the One of them, it, basically, he's running a Soldano slow preamp into mm, okay. power amp. And, but then also doing, he's... These guys, have, you know, are freaking wizards, right? So not only can they freaking play like monsters, but they have all the skills in the in the studio to make things sound as epic and as monstrous as possible. Yeah. So like Frederick talks about his rig, and he's like, oh, yeah, and I also have lots of MIDI. I, I trigger all sorts of, you know, things from, from, a, from a MIDI, from MIDI, so, so, and, he, and he's not going to go into every last little detail, but, you know, these guys are taking advantage of all the tools that are available to them. So, like, being able to, on the drop of a hat, right, drop of a hi-hat, you know, yeah. <laughs> are switching. Which, by the way, the, the symbols sound so good. The symbols are gorgeous, yeah. Gorgeous. The way the you know, again, work, you know, working with the – guys that they do um it's amazing that the sound that they come out with on the live shows you know i, I know uh it, mike you said you're somewhat disappointed at times by some of the the live shows and it's more i think that's more execution than i mean the, the engineering that they they have for their live shows is top notch i mean it's top notch oh, without, without a doubt yeah, yeah. yeah i mean 
the sound is amazing. Every show sounds amazing. Yeah, there may be some songs that aren't their best, uh, you know, effort. But uh, um, yeah, I, it's they are incredible uh, live because it, it, was, just, it was more, the way more specifically. They, the way they, yeah, the way they set up their set list is to be like a whole movement as you go through the show. Yeah. Mood changes throughout and takes you all over the place from different albums. And that's such a, a monstrous thing. I, I totally dig that as opposed to me growing up. I'm, I'm probably a bit older than you guys. I'm 53. That, they, that When you'd go see a band, it was all the songs from their latest album is what you saw live and maybe a couple of classic songs. That, that's a huge thing with Opeth that I'm very impressed they're able to pull off is they can do from the from the entire catalog. And it's oh, not absolutely. an issue. And everyone is into it. Yeah, so and they Tony, make it happen. Yeah. So they Tony, just make what it happen. You're, what, what you're saying is, is that uh, most bands that you saw coming up when they would tour, they would really only play a couple, you know, maybe a handful or less of their songs that weren't off their current album. Depending on the band, certain bands would pay play a lot of the old material, but then, but it, you know, most of it was focused on, oh, well, this is the Iron Maiden Power Slave tour. We're going to play all the songs off of Power buy the, Slave. Buy the new record yeah. and a t-shirt while you're Yeah, out. and then, you know, with all, you know, classic songs, you know, of the Iron Maiden catalog, but um, a lot of like, you know, I saw Robert Cray on the the Smoking Gun tour it was based. God, do I love the, Robert Cray? The, the whole album, he played the whole album, and it sounded just like I was listening to the CD. To me, I mean, that's incredible to be able to do that, but I could just listen to the CD. I mean, so I many hear... people are sleeping on Robert Cray. Oh, Robert yeah. Cray okay. is so amazing i know i i think you were in the chat when terrence um his drummer who now plays for keith urban yeah. um yeah. was robert robert cray's drummer um and he, he said he had some comment where he was just like that like that was like the peak of the mountaintop like as far as because because anybody can play loud and fast and do all the notes but being able yeah. to be slow and sensitive and feel that like that swing in a really slow time the way Robert would do it is just really the best of the best. I love it. It is. I mean, what what's it so amazing about uh you know people think that oh being able to play really fast and but no playing being able to play slow so slow hard. meters and play it to where it sounds phenomenal, that is like the most difficult thing to accomplish. De as definitely, a guitar. <clears throat> it's, it's guitarists tough. are habitually ahead of the beat, and if you actually want to make a slow, especially like a, a rhythm and blues style thing, actually feel tasteful and soulful, you gotta know where to place behind the beat, and that's yeah. very fucking yeah. difficult for for guitarist intuition, at least um, modern guitarist intuition. Yes. But what's amazing to me is that Michael Ockerfeld seems to throw that in the blue, like that he throws in these bluesy runs oh, yeah. constantly, and it sounds it, it just fits. It fits. Okay. And it's melodic. Part, it, part, it's, part part of that is because it's within his capabilities. <laughs> <laughs> that is part of it. But that's not. But that that's not a dog. That's just the, the no, that should not. be inspiration to the other guys who aren't going to be out here being Petrucci, like sure. you can make it work in a prog metal band and deliver something delicious and ethereal and takes takes your audience to the next tier of, of yeah. observing the world with a pentatonic scale. You can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Stevie Ray Vaughan did it for the blues and, you know, fuck, I mean, these guys, did, you know, Michael Ockerfeld can pull it off playing prog metal. Almost like it's it's universal. <laughs> we're not we're not we're not going to get into that one right now. Yeah. Uh, no, no, to, to, no. To to speak to what you were saying about the the warmth of the lead tone, uh, Mike. Yes. Um, I think that actually goes hand in hand with what you were talking about with how you're surprised they don't have any ice pickiness. I, I think it's specifically because they have some type of post processor before it goes out the mains. 
that yeah. actually filters out the ice pick and that naturally through the, the, the compression process that happens through all of the processing um, will make it sound or appear warmer for lack of a better term. You I, think I think they, once, you once think you they have that in their ears too? Uh, what, yeah. what? They're, they're all wearing in your monitors throughout. The, throughout yeah. So they're getting the same thing that's coming through the mains. So they're getting all that cut out. If they have enough money, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have enough money. Definitely. It, it doesn't seem like they don't. It like they're trying to be <clears throat> cheap with their production. <laughs> not. Yeah. Not they're even not. close. Yeah. They're yeah. not. But it, it, it like I mean, I, I'm not going to make any presumptions about what I see versus what's happening on stage. I, I I've I've been very surprised by how um how DIY some of the the largest productions can actually be. I mean, I'm thinking Guar specifically. They got massive puppets on stage, but like, yep. you know, they're they're running garbage sometimes. God bless them. So, well, I mean, did, they use what works, right? It's like the gear they yeah, have, yeah. what they're used to making work live. You, you make it work, and you you find the, the the staff that can continue to make that happen. Or then so, you end up switching to buying new gear and you know starting over. So uh, I have a really, really, really close friend. Uh, that I used to play with, and he had some. He had he was on the radio for a while, and he had some uh, opportunity uh, to go see Aerosmith, like you know, in the late '90s, um, maybe early 2000s, and and be uh, on the stage. And he, like, I remember him telling me one time. He said, Richie Sambora had this whole wall of amplifiers behind him. But then behind the wall of amplifiers, he had a Fender Twin, and he had Boss pedals, not even plugged in, with a battery, and one SM57, and that was the sound coming out of the mains. Wow. And, it was, and it, was all, it was all for show. Yeah, there's a lot wow. of lore about that, and there's a lot of <laughs> But he said he saw it. <laughs> Billy Gibbons did the same thing. He had he had these big walls of crate, and you know, one was turned on. Maybe yeah. one or one was turned on to have lights on, but then behind the scene, he was playing through a bunch of five F one tweed champ yeah. and his pedal rig and you know MIDI rig to switch back and forth. He you know, he was using some crazy thing like sixteen expandoras at one time through. One, one through his, his rig just so, to get this crazy overdriven sound. Right? So about Billy Gibbons, I saw when we were talking about Billy Gibbons um, and we we're having the P90 conversation, you said you had a Phil X story about he played one of your uh, one of your rigs. What What is that? Yeah, so uh, years ago when I was really active in the amplifier community and, and we did the uh, LA Amp show, every year and did nam and whatnot and had met phil a couple of times and he came to uh the lam show representing a line of amplifiers he was playing at the time called uh, robot something or another um and they were kind of takeoffs of like a magnetone and so he made the round just checking out everybody's room and came through and he came to my room and grabbed my uh 78 Les Paul with P90s that was hooked up to um, my Vapor, which is a take on the uh, on a train wreck Liverpool. Mm-hmm. If you're familiar with those amplifiers, which is an uh, interesting thing, but he just shredded to, to all living hell and like with his mouth wide open and everybody else's mouth wide open in the room, just played it like was rolling it up and down, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And, uh, you know, it's, it was just kind of just a fun experience. I mean, you know, I didn't expect to see him come through my room. I've seen other folks, big name folks come through, but, um, yeah, it was interesting. He, he, yeah, the guy is an unbelievable player. Yeah, he is. I didn't. And he's also it. he's also know. he's also a great time too. Uh, I've had some yeah. unbelievable yeah. hangs with him. Yeah, he's an incredibly fun fun guy. I mean, he he, he uh, guy that never does not have a smile on his face. That's right. 
That's right. And that's what we should all be doing. We should all have a big smile on our face and enjoy what we're doing. That's right. Do, doing that while playing live on stage, if you have like a an actual recited difficult thing you're playing, is very difficult. <laughs> oh, to we, keep us to keep a smile and keep the whole thing like, like, you, like you have an intricate part. It, yeah. Yes. Like like so. Not everyone realizes it because I don't think they pay that close attention. Like the stuff the stuff that my band writes is pretty damn difficult. And we actually made it a challenge for a while to put on like a a big, like hilariously terrible smile the entire time while we were playing a song. And I mean, it, it, it made us mess up more, but it actually did help us emotionally get more invested into it. It was it was a pretty fun exercise, honestly. You know, but when you sit and think about it, the like it is really hard to pin down uh, players and singers that always have a smile on their face. You know, when they're performing, it's it's very few people. Like it is, it is not something that you see all the time. And when you see it, it stands out, especially to non musicians. Uh, yeah. I know one. Yeah, who's part of our community. I'm wearing your shirt tonight. The black cat. I love it. Black cat management. Mr. Sean Miller always has yes. a smile on his face. He does always have a smile on his face. I know he's just about to graduate Berkeley, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Like oh, he's still it. a student? Yeah. yeah, he's getting his master's. A member of our community is getting their master's um, at Berkeley. He's a songwriter, um, singer, and... Uh, and uh, yeah, it's like in April. It's this. It's it's right now. Yeah, it's coming Something up. Something like that. It's coming up. Well, all right, my friends. Oh, hold, on, hold on, before before you do it, I, I have a, a possible me. ask, and you can tell me no. That is fine. Hit me. Um, would you be willing to listen to a six-minute song that is my band's latest single, and tell me what we need to improve on? Shit, right now. Yeah, or or or, or later. Too it's up to you. You well, What's you tell me. You tell me <laughs> because because there's a one hundred percent chance because of the block before that if we do it live oh, now, I, it I will not for... it will not see the light of day past who's watching right now. Oh, I, I don't give a shit about that. But then do but, it. but if you but but if you want it on my main channel, I'll do it for you. Oh, all right. You tell me, sir. There, there's that. I mean, it's whatever. <laughs> it, was a, it was a drunk thought. You can take that for me. Mr. Tonic dry wants run. to listen yeah. to it. I we'll, do a, it. we'll do a dry one. Shoot me a link. Put it in the private chat. We'll see what happens. Word. Uh, would you? Uh, is it okay if it's just uh, album art? Like for the video? I'll allow it. We, we do have a lyric video, but it's... Oh, it's man, like, are they uh, live? Or what the hell? <laughs> don't you know that we only do live music here? We only do live music. <laughs> Exclu exclusively live music. What? Well, you were live in the studio at the time, right? <laughs> well, you know what? It's not no, even... It's, no, it's, that's it's... also not the case. <laughs> It's it's not even exclusive to this channel. I In my own life, like I, I pretty much only have ever listened to live music. Like in live records, I basically don't listen to studio records. Oh wow! Okay, always. I, mean, I I'm when you when you come to Nashville, we well. need we need to get you on our podcast because that that is a, a very interesting perspective to uh to dive into. I, I would I'm love quite to. the opposite, actually. I'm very much the opposite. Yeah, I I um, well, we can do it on your podcast, but yeah, I I, and since the very beginning, um. I've always been attracted to live music and live records. I've really never been, I've never gravitated towards studio records. Well, I have bad okay. news about this song then. <laughs> Very bad good news. Studio, good studio records have their place, though. Like, of course I mean, they do. Of, of course, yeah. 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 Of, of, of course I mean, they do. There's so much, most, but, like, there's so much the studio royal, magic. Oh, yeah, the Royal Scam. Steely yeah. Dan is yeah. a studio for a masterpiece. Everybody should I, own that album, even if you don't like Steely Dan. 
I, I agree mean, with you, that. You, you bring up bring up a very good point about Steely Dan and production. That's for damn sure. Um, but I, I would actually say like the the studio experience is more um, more relevant today than it has ever been. Tell me about that. Oh well. Oh okay. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that technology and just I guess the the economy in general has gone so high that it's very common for people to have their own stereo experience in both ears. So it's not going to yeah. be the same as having two speakers in front of you at a at a perfect uh, isosceles triangle or whatever the hell the proper shape is, pardon me. Um, but everyone is having their own intimate studio experience with themselves on a very regular basis or or they're listening to it on their on their uh, phone speakers. And there's a lot less people going out to live shows. Now, I'm not saying this is a good thing. <laughs> I'm not saying yeah. this is a good thing necessarily. But um, I, I think just because of that, the the ability to gatekeep production before you publish is a lot more important than it was, say, 50 years ago or hmm. even 30 years ago, yeah. frankly. Interesting. All right, I'm going to hit the button on this. Go Let's for it. do it. Boom. You can hear that, right? It's mono. <laughs> it's mono in my ears. My whole life is mono. <laughs> I love the bass. The bass is a great tone. Smoking, brother. Is that you? Singing? Yeah, playing. Singing. Not singing, no. no. It's our, our vocalist, Ryan. Love that change. I always dreamed of it this way. Where I say long silver sawdust and you go inside. Double verse. A little bit. A little bit. My broken mother. A mine and set in my embrace. Soon you will discover a warmth and then a cold look in my face. Let's say. Love that slide on the vocals. We spent, we spent 13 hours tracking the lead vocals on this man. We, th th these are not tuned. These are just comped well. Awesome. Perfect. Oh, really? Cool. We'll stop Work. there and, we'll, and then we'll keep going. Um, no, no worries. So my first thought, and again, take it all with a grain of salt, but you asked my opinion. Yeah, um, yeah give the critique. Is um, I would get to the hook quicker, but that's just me. I, I, our, like, our, our producer thought the same thing. Yeah, that seems pretty apparent um, because it really delivers. That's that vocal slide in there is so clean, and the and the the fact that you said that isn't um, fixed, it's is not tuned. It is not. Yeah, tuned. is slick. I would, I would present that within the first minute, minute fifteen, or something like that. I don't know how long it took to get to it, but quicker. Lo longer than a minute fifteen, I can tell you that. Yeah, maybe, something maybe like a, a non-lyrical vocal intro. 
Your so, vocalist um, yeah, has really the, dated me really off yeah, on he, it. He, he's yeah, a, yeah, he's a real, really exceptional vocalist. My my thought of trying to do that ahead of time, which apparently wasn't effective enough, because like you're, you're not the first person to say yeah. this, um, was that big zoom bit of bin a bin in it did that that whole big intro that just comes right in, but I guess people aren't expecting it to immediately dip afterwards for an extended soft build in the in the verse and pre-chorus, so that 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 might be uh, no. part of the issue for lack of a better term. No. My my only other issue, it, it, the song sounds really cool. I think you got a fantastic. Yeah, you, you know you don't got to qualify it, but thanks. <laughs> no, the, the, the reverb on the drums is overwhelming. <laughs> oh, okay, especially through the the quiet section. I'll be right back. So yeah. I I know, I know what you're saying there. I, I I felt that initially myself. Um, I got over it because I'm just like, fuck it, don't care. And I don't I don't think oh, anyone. Gosh. I I would say most most people don't care about it either, but. Uh, I wouldn't say that that's a. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't that's, say that that's, that's a bad true. take. No, it's not. I, I wouldn't say it's either. It sounds really good. That's what I'm saying. That, but with the, I'm listening through studio monitors. Yeah. And yeah. my listening through my earbuds or cans. Are 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 you actually getting? Phone. Are are you actually getting a, a stereo experience? It seems a bit monoral. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Let, let's let's get you let's get no, you a link no to the plan. non. No let's, right. let's get you a link to the studio one, and you you might feel differently. Okay. But all but I, still, I to it, yeah. Ha, having having said that, this is something our producer and mixing engineer has, has been harping on himself. Uh, it's very interesting hearing this in mono versus hearing it in stereo. Uh, he, he's been working on making his mono mixes sound way freaking better, and, and this this ain't this quite ain't it in mono for sure. I I've listened to a bunch of mono uh, vinyl recently, and some of these mixes are insanely good. Wow, really? So good? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, there's a it's soundtrack a, like... to to a, a Greek movie that I listened to. It was mono oral on vinyl picked it up for like two bucks at a record shop i'll take a chance ended up being fantastic absolutely fantastic music and monorail mix through surround sound sounded massive through surround sound no less wow yeah just just put it on the all channel all channel stereo if you have a Mm. monorail mix you hit that it'll just play stereo through all your different channels and it, it it sounds massive. Love it. Shall we finish it up? It's up up to you. Yes. All right. Should we close it out with the moments in hand, the clouds I wanted. Revealing to me how much is missing in the guitars with this mono experience I'm having. Like, really? Sounds pretty I, big to me. I, I'm happy you like it. Um, I mean, I don't know if, if you're hearing it in stereo or not. No, but I, 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 get, I get a lot of shit. I get to give my friend and producer a lot of shit after this. It's the big part of information. The truth won't Love the tremolo thing. 
and the groove. This is the coolest part of the song. It gets better. Nice. Yeah, this is fucking awesome. He actually played those drums. Wait, wait, is that? Wait, 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 wait. No. Okay. No, 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 no. You, you got to You got to go back, cause, cause the outro, the outro is a whole thing. You got to go back. Got to go back a little bit and start it again. How far? Trust me. Like, tw- like 15 seconds. 15 seconds. And let the whole thing play out, and then we'll talk. Let it play. Let All it right, play here out. we go. I dig it. So there's no way there's no way <laughs> to uh to to give critique without like offending somebody. Um, yep. I mean, the the offense can only be taken, not given. So go for it. I love that. I quote, agree. With you, Mike. I love that quote. I'm gonna write that shit down. Um, <laughs> so you like you writing tr- you, you, you have a, Yeah, you got. I'll I, I'll remember it, and then I will write it down. I got the pen. So, uh, you have a tremendous singer. And yes. if the drummer was really playing all those parts, you have a tremendous drummer. Truly, yes. Yes, yes. Um, I would get to those things quicker. I would... I, I felt like... I felt like... Um, you kind of like... Like... like, like you, you limped into it, you know? You danced uh, around it a bit. And danced around it a bit. Like, even if... Even if, like, the drums would like in the first 30 seconds or something, just do like a little tiny fill or something to just let everybody know that just like there's some serious shit coming, you know? Or like like that first vocal run, like like when the singer just slid right up into that high atmosphere, like that really stuck with me and like grabbed my attention. Like I just feel like that should happen sooner like it would it should all happen sooner because it culminates in this really strong performance i just feel like you're gonna lose people in the first minute that's that's my honest feedback yeah. damn i i think you're I'll, right I'll, uh, I'll uh add to that and not, not try not to be offensive i think it's positive feedback <laughs> It's a really great overall vibe. June's, June's there's, there's not, there's not, there's not. The vibe is one, great. There's not one the second vibe. of this entire feedback I would consider remotely negative. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's just phenomenal. It's a phenomenal song. I think you got a phenomenal start here. You're, you're yeah, thank the, you. The totally. Um, the I think what, what Michael is speaking to I think has to do with there's a little a bit of overproduction getting to the main hook. 
right? This is that's, finding that, 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 that's, that's finding that an earlier point, getting that rid of mean. some of the, getting rid of some of the, you know, the, you know, the way it's presented. Just so, so we, we just went. We, keep, keeping in mind, we just went through an entire evening of Opeth, and Opeth <laughs> yeah. takes a shitload of time to maybe get to the point. Yes. Keeping that in mind, yeah, it does. So, it does. absolutely does. So it that this was a single and a standalone single. In that regard, I would definitely agree. If we're talking about just like an honest expression. I mean that that's come see come saw in, in in that regard. Like, yes, you are right that in a world of people who are exceedingly picky and don't have the patience, or for that matter, and bombarded should, should, with content, bombarded. Come bombarded. Yeah. Yes, you 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 gotta you gotta give them some reason to actually stick around and invest further because their time is as valuable as everyone else's. In Absolutely. that regard, I fully agree. Um, that's not where my head was at when I when I sure. wrote and arranged it, and um, that's, I think that's I think that's you... the all. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, just go ahead. Finish your thought. Finish your thought. Sorry, I, 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 I was, was going to say that 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 also would make a difference between like an an album or an EP's worth of of stuff where you want like okay, this is the song you got to like get them in quickly. And this is the one that's like the concept piece, for lack of a better term. And yeah. it was it was in a middle space that didn't quite hit the whole hit the whole um, spectrum. Yeah, I get it. That I totally get it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, listen, it sucks to be um, you know making original music in this world where no one listens to albums anymore and nothing's in the context of a full artistic expression of that's that spans eight songs or 10 songs, you know, 30 or 40 minutes. I mean, that's really a fucking hard spot to be. Um, but, but I'm, I'm right there. I'm right there. Yeah, I know. And so again, you know, I understand what you're saying. I would only just say that like, it's not clear how great the musicians in the band are until the song progresses past a point where I think I think a lot of people will just click to the next thing or wh- or whatever it is. That's 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 an interesting point of view, honestly. And, and that that's the other thing is like, who didn't, who am I trying to? Oh, so, sorry, Mike. I'm No, no. Go, go ahead. Um, go ahead. Didn't Sting say something to the effect that if I don't hear something within the first eight beats of the song that that gathers me in or hooks me, I'm gonna shut it off. I'm gonna he said he, he said that out. he said that talking to Beato. And yeah, he did. He did, and and it was something to the effect that. Um, in the first, I don't think if, I don't know if he said beats or second or something like that, but it, it's a small number regardless. But but yeah, but, was, but, but the point is, the the point yeah. is is that you you want to aspire to have something sound unique and intriguing, pretty much instantaneously because people's attention spans are fleeting. And even more so these days, and it's such a hard thing to do in the context of people not listening to whole albums. They're listening yeah. to their fifteen-second TikTok, you know, it's segment. The, the, terrible the la- time. Yeah, I know. The, the the last, I guess, soft defense of my my point of view when I was making it. Um, one of because um, if you listen to our first releases prior to this, very very different vibe. Um, for the most part, um, one of the things I, I was to trying those. to focus. Uh, I would love yeah, to hear uh, that. Oh, okay. <laughs> the production Michael, is not remotely as good. Well, yeah, I, need, I need to hear. I will. Those. I will. The uh, the 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 thing I wanted to focus on was like you were saying, if it doesn't hook me in the first eight seconds, well, Pink Floyd took a shitload of time to get to the fucking point usually. 
What oh, did yeah, they have the in most favor? time? The most and, time. And, and it was timbre. That was the thing. I, I wanted to focus on delicious timbre, and yes. clearly we didn't hit it. Clearly we did not hit it quite quite right. But I, but I ask you, though, if Dark Side of the Moon would come out in 2023... It wouldn't sound the same. It would not. It and, 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 it, and, and and would it have, what did it have, like seven years staying on the charts or something like that? Like Hell no. Years? Not and, no. No, no, no. It was like 20 plus years. Right. It, like, it, 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 longer it, than that, right? If you, if you yeah. went through the same processes and time that it took Pink Floyd to do all that experimentation, <clears throat> it would cost at least seven times as much. It would be so expensive to do that these days because it's not right. it's not like you're just fighting like well i mean we have whatever technology you're also fighting the fact that i'm gonna sit like i as a person helping this band make an album i'm gonna dedicate two years of my life that i could be spending making bank just editing vocals or just do or tuning reverbs or some That's an dumb interesting shit. point you know, like, like oh, it Alan, so Alan Parsons would be doing other stuff is what you're saying. Yeah, a absolutely. Of, yeah. Without a doubt. Think of, the Make time. A bank. think of the time though. Think of the sure. time that, that, you know, the specialization of that may have existed, but was it prominent enough for someone to make a whole career off of, I'm good, the one who point. fixes the warbles in the recording. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a different time. But uh, it is totally Mike, thank time. thank you so much for um for for giving me that space, man. I appreciate. Oh, that. dude, my pleasure. And um, well, I'm just gonna wrap it up. It's been two hours and fifteen minutes. But um, do you go by Mike or Michael? Whichever you prefer. I'm gonna go by Mike because I go by Michael. Hell yeah! There you go. Um, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed Opeth. I hope you're enjoying um, this conversation. And if you haven't yet, please click the first link in the description. Check out Mike's channel, Become the Night. Um, Tonic, thanks for jumping on here again. One of our fearless moderators, keeping this place safe and kind and everything else. And uh, Mike, hang up or hang hang on because we're going to talk off camera. But everybody, I'll see you very very soon. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, I love you. And if you do nothing else, keep that guitar in your hands. Cheers. Love you Stay all. Stay awesome, peeps.